Good News Ministries of GNM.org presents Footsteps to Heaven. Life's a journey full of challenges. Sometimes we get stalled. Sometimes we get sidetracked. When we walk with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to the destination that God the Father designed for us, the results are better than we could ask for or imagine. And now, here is your host, Terry Modica. Hi. Welcome to the premiere episode of the Good News Ministries podcast series, Footsteps to Heaven. I would like to begin this series with my favorite scripture, or I should say one of my favorite scriptures. Has God given you a favorite scripture, a life verse, something that represents you, your life, God's goals for your life, the goals that he's given you a passion for, something that represents his relationship with you, something that just stands out whenever you read it as God the Father putting his loving hand on your shoulder going, that's my girl, that's my boy. This is a message that I have for you each and every day of your life. This is a message affirming you. This is a message guiding you. Whatever it is that the Lord wants to accomplish by giving you something that's sacred in Scripture between you and Him. I have several verses like that, but I would think that my probably the 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 most important scripture or maybe not important isn't the right word but the one that has been with me the longest as the special life verse that God has given me the one that every time I hear it read in mass um, or come across it in some other way I get excited inside because I know this is something that the Lord has put on my heart as being my special scripture. It's the first psalm, psalm number one. Let me share it with you. Happy the person who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose whose leaves never fade. Whatever he or she does prospers. That's verses 1 through 3. Let me unpack that for you and share with you what it means to me and what it can mean for you. Okay, happy the person who follows not the counsel of the wicked. In scripture, the word happy is often interchanged with the word blessed. Blessed, remember Jesus gave the the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed is he who mourns, you know, blessed who he, you know, etc., happy is he who mourns. I mean, that's a contradiction, right? And one of these podcasts, I'm going to get into the Beatitudes probably. But right now, I want to look at and stay looking at Psalm 1. Blessed is the person who follows the counsel of the wicked. When we are blessed, God is, God's goodness is on us. God's joy is on us. God's help is on us. When God blesses something, his whole self goes into it. This is why we bless ourselves as we enter the church and dip our hands in the holy water. You know, dipping our hands in the holy water is a renewal of our baptismal promises. And we make the sign of the cross blessing ourselves. That is renewing within us, especially if we are conscious of this paying attention to this, not just doing it rotely, but it is a renewal of God's whole self coming back into our lives. You know, when we're going about our daily life, there are things that we do that pull ourselves away from God. We are not perfectly holy. Uh, We are not perfectly in line with his will for us each and every day, every moment of the day. We are not fully aware of God. We are not fully 
praying and talking to God, communicating with God, we are not fully doing what he is guiding us to do. We are not fully immersed in all of God's love, receiving all of God's love, and giving that love to others. And when we bless ourselves with the sign of the cross in the, in the anointing of the holy water, we are, we are renewing God's fullness of presence within ourselves, on ourselves, in ourselves, in our life, in our hearts, in our desire to worship him as we are now entering into the mass, for example. Well, getting back to Psalm 1, blessed is the person who follows not the counsel of the wicked. When we are avoiding the ways of sin, the ways of the world, when we are separating ourselves from and, and, and disbelieving the lies that the world wants us to believe, that the devil wants us to believe, that people who are not fully alive in Christ want us to believe. When we are not following those ways, we are fully immersed in God and he is fully on us, fully in us, fully with us. Therefore, we are blessed. Therefore, we are happy. Happy the person, Psalm 1 says, verse 1, who follows not the counsel of the wicked. We are happy even in the midst of troubling times. We are happy because we know that God is with us. Even when we're being persecuted because we are not following the ways of the wicked. And you know, today we are persecuted more than ever, at least right here in my country, the United States where I live, um, and in many other places around the world, we are persecuted more than ever before for following Christ and for refusing to follow the ways of the wicked. And in upcoming episodes of this podcast, Footsteps to Heaven, I'm going to be talking quite a bit about how to remain apart from the world and full of the joy of the Lord as a result of it, fully in the blessings of the Lord as a result of it, and how to deal with the persecutions and how to, to come alive in the truth through the Holy Spirit and how to receive the fullness of God that I've been talking about so far in this podcast. That's the purpose of this podcast series. Footsteps to Heaven is all about how to become the saint, the holy person that God designed us to be. When he created us in our mother's womb, he had in his imagination, his creative imagination, who he wanted us to be. And then we entered into the world in human flesh corrupted by the original sin and when we are baptized we are freed from that and recreated into being who God the Father wants us to be who he designed us to be the apple of his eye that he foresaw when he created us in our mother's womb that is who he wants to help us to be he gave us the Holy Spirit for that. He gave us, first of all, Jesus Christ to redeem us into that. Redeem us from our sins so that we could come fully alive in our sainthood. And this podcast series, Footsteps to Heaven, is all about how to be who you really are. How to be who God designed you to be from the very first moment he gave you life in your mother's womb. All right, let me go a little bit further. Let's continue with Psalm 1. Happy the person who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but, verse 2, delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. First of all, to delight in the law of the Lord doesn't mean to be legalistically uh, worried about if I don't do this thing exactly the way God wants me to do it or the way I think God wants me to do it or the way someone else has prescribed for me 
to do it. If I don't do it exactly right, I am going, to, I'm sinning, I'm going to lose my salvation, I'm go, not going to get to heaven possibly, um, I'm not uh, pleasing the Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm not the saint that God is calling me to be. Um, we're not talking about the law in the sense of legalism. We are talking, remember, Jesus said he came to fulfill the law. And when he did that, he also said that the greatest two commandments are to love God with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul, our whole being, our whole life, our whole self, and to love others as we love ourselves, to wholeheartedly love ourselves because God wholeheartedly loves us and therefore we are capable, we become capable of loving others wholeheartedly because God first loved us and he empowers us to love others and that too will be something that I will be addressing in, in future episodes of Footsteps to Heaven. I'm going to be sharing a lot about how to really get in touch with God the Father's love for us because you know what most of us have some sort of father wound a wound that has been um, uh, caused by human fathers and other parental figures, other authority figures who have not been perfect. And hey, isn't that everybody who's human? You know, everybody who uh, who has been in our life, uh, and everybody who who represents in some way fatherhood. They have let us down and have given us, although not intentionally, probably have given us a wrong impression of what God the Father is really like. And so I'm going to be spending a lot of episodes, a lot of time in the, in, in the series on how to get in touch with how much Father God really cares about you, how much you are the apple of his eye, how much he sees what is good in you even while you are sinning. So that is something to look forward to. And when we, getting back to Psalm 1, verse 2, when we delight in the law of the Lord, when we delight in worshiping God, the ultimate law, worshiping God with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul, and loving ourselves and loving others wholeheartedly, when we delight in doing that and second part of verse 2, meditate on his law day and night. Meditate on the love of God. Meditate on his calling to love others. Meditate on, on our love for God, our devotion to God, how much we want to please him because not because we, we're afraid of going to hell if we sin, but because we just know he is so good that we just, you know, hey, we're just like, I want to be, I, I want to love him wholeheartedly because he's so good to me. I want to do good things for him because he's so good to me. When this fills our lives, which is what it means by day and night, because you know what? While we're sleeping at night, we're not consciously meditating on God's laws, on, 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 on loving God and receiving his love and, and giving his love. And, and while we're busy during the day at work, you know, we're not consciously in the forefront of our minds thinking about and meditating on the ways of God and his calling and, you know, what, we're, what he's telling us to do and how to be obedient to him and all that. But if it's in our heart it's there all the time. If our desire is to love God wholeheartedly, then it's in us all the time, even when we're not conscious of it. And when that's the case, verse 3 says that we are like a tree that's been planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade and whatever we do prospers. Okay, let me talk about the running water there. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. Whenever scripture talks about water, especially running water, life-giving water, he, the scripture 
is talking about the Holy Spirit. There may be other symbolic meanings to it too, um, like being filled up. Like when Jesus gave the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well, uh, when, when he met her at the well and, and said that he was going to give her life giving water that would, she would never thirst again. And at first she thought he meant the, the physical water in the well. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit that he was going to give her. Psalm 3 here is, I mean, Psalm 1 verse 3 here is talking about we, when we are, 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 are giving, loving God with our whole heart, when we are meditating on, in our very being, on loving God and loving others um, and, and obeying God because we, we just love him so much and we know he loves us so much, we are like a tree planted near running water. The Holy Spirit will forever continually nourish our roots, will continually help us to, to, to receive everything from God so that we are equipped and capable of doing everything God calls us to do. You know, I've been talking about loving God with our whole heart, our whole heart and loving others wholeheartedly as well. We can't do that if our roots are not planted in the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit and God has planted us there. Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know the Holy Spirit as, you know, a person of the Trinity, in other words, on a personal level, in friendship, you know, not to, the Holy Spirit is not just some ethereal force you know, but is you know, if the, if you don't know the Holy Spirit on an intimate, personal level, pray this prayer: Come, Holy Spirit, renew me. Come, Holy Spirit, fill me. Come, Holy Spirit, you have my permission to change me. You're going to hear me repeat this prayer very often in this podcast series because this is my mantra. This is what I recommend over and over again to be your mantra because it makes all the difference all the difference in the world all the difference in our being so we are like the tree planted in the holy spirit yielding fruit in due season that means that what god has gifted you to do what god created you to do what god is calling you to do including and starting with loving him and loving everyone else wholeheartedly. We go through preparation time where God nourishes our soil, where God uh, you know, sprouts us from a seed or he takes seeds uh, of, of things that happen in our lives, seeds of things that we learn, um, you know, things are planted in our lives that grow when we let the Holy Spirit nourish us. And these, you know, our, our life itself was a seed when God created us. And as we go through life, he is constantly nourishing things that happen, nourishing us in the things that happen to us, both the good and the bad so that we can create good fruits and we will create good fruits no doubt about it as long as we are staying planted in the holy spirit even the bad things as a matter of fact the bad things that happen to us become our greatest fruits when we let the holy spirit take over and is psalm th psalm 1 verse 3 talks about about due season bearing fruit in due season. We do go through times of preparation, times of healing, times of learning, times of going through trials and getting through them far enough to where we have learned enough that we can begin to bear fruit with this. And what does fruit do? Fruit is not for our own benefit. Fruit is for the benefit of others. 
Fruit is for the nourishment of others. This is, this is my life first. This is what God has been doing with my life. God has been, has been taking a lot of suffering and a lot of good things that have happened to me. You know, I've been through a lot. And God is bringing good fruits out of it for your sake, for the sake of everyone whom he calls me to serve, most of whom I don't know, most of whom I will never meet except when we get together in heaven and rejoice and thank the Lord for all that he has accomplished in our relationship with each other, even though we are not meeting here on earth. This is this is my life verse because God is you know, God planted me in the Holy Spirit back in 1977 when I met for the first time in my life in my early 20s I met the Holy Spirit as a real person a real friend a real helper a real counselor, a real nurturer of the gifts that God has given me and is calling me to. And this this verse in Psalm 1 also says, besides yielding fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade, you know, as long as we are in the Holy Spirit, we stay fresh. We Our leaves are always green. There is no death that happens. Yes, we die to ourselves every day. We need to do that to become more and more the saint that God creates us to be. We need to die to the parts of ourselves that are not like Christ. And we're going to cover that. I'm going to be providing in future episodes helps for that. And this verse finishes with, and whatever he or she does prospers. This podcast series, I know without a doubt, is going to prosper because God has called me to do this. I have no doubt about that. He's put it on my heart for months. He's been preparing me for months. He's been he's been nurturing me. He's been giving me his life-giving waters. He's been inspiring me. He's been giving me ideas. He's been giving me training so that in due season, which has now begun, praise the Lord, I can give my fruits, or I should say God's fruits that he's produced in my life to you. And one of the things that I'm going to do in each of these episodes is I'm going to end the episodes with prayer. I want to pray for you. God knew you would be listening to this episode when I recorded it. I have no idea who is listening to this. I have no idea what God has in mind, who he's calling to to, to actually listen to this. But he knows. He knew before I began, before I hit the record button. And before I hit the record button, I went into prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to give me a word of knowledge for for some of the people listening to this podcast so that you would know that He cares, God the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, God, all of God, cares about you with all of His heart all of his mind, all of his soul. And as I, as I share with you what he revealed to me, I need you to do something. If this resonates with you, if any of the things that I'm about to share speak to you, speak about something going on in your life, about a healing that he's giving you, I need you to let me know. Because you can help build up my faith and reinforce that I am doing what the Lord wants me to do. And in so doing, you will receive the healing that he wants to give to you. 
that's part of that's part of the the way that God often works. I'm going to share the words of knowledge, and if if this is you, and if you find the healing is, has begun to happen in you, if you feel that like the Holy Spirit in you is jumping up and down, going, "Yes, this is for you," then then either contact me on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, Good News Ministries Facebook page is just just look up Good News Catholic. W- one word, Good News Catholic, and that's how you can find us on Facebook. Or come to my website, gnm.org, and go to the contact page. Or you can also contact me on WhatsApp. Okay, here goes. As I was praying... Before hitting the record button, I felt the Lord impress upon me something about a big toe on the left foot. If you have something going on, like maybe you stubbed your toe, I don't know what's what's wrong. Maybe it's it's diabetes and the and the the toe is dying. I don't know what it is, but a big toe on the left foot came to me. If this is you, know that the Lord wants to heal that. Another thing that, that came to mind was that there is somebody who is looking for God to open a door, some sort of door. I don't know what kind of door it is, but I felt impressed upon me that that somebody listening to this is looking for God to open a door to some kind of opportunity. And he wants you to know that he is indeed guiding you stay the course, don't worry, trust him, he will open the right door, and it may not be what you're expecting, but just follow him, trust him, he is going to open a door that when you get there, you will realize it's the right door. If that speaks to you, then please let me know. Please give us feedback. And this will also, by the way, by sharing with me the feedback of that, you know, that you're claiming that this is God's word for you, um, I will also be able to share that with others. If you post it on Facebook, others will see it. Um, it may go into uh, the, my weekly newsletter that comes off of my website the Insider's View newsletter, in order to build the faith of others. All right. Another word of knowledge that I believe the Lord gave me was that there's somebody that has a third degree burn on his or her right foot. And the Lord wants to heal that. Also, I feel that the Lord is speaking to more than one person about a broken heart somebody or some ones um, has been uh, brokenhearted because someone that you thought was the right person for you really is the wrong person for you and the Lord has somebody else he wants you to know that there is someone else that he has in mind for you you know th- this may not this word may not be for everybody who's brokenhearted because I think all of us in some you know if we've lived long enough we've have broken hearts and we may still be living with that but there's there's at least I think there's there's two or three people maybe even more than that listening to this podcast who has been embracing who has been um, holding on to someone who is the wrong person for you and this has caused you a lot of grief and you are broken hearted over it and God wants you to let go because he has someone better in mind for you better suited to you someone that he personally has chosen for you I thank you for listening to these podcasts and let me close with a prayer Father God, we ask you to please bless everyone who has listened to this podcast and help take root in them, whatever it is that you, O Lord, you Holy Spirit, want them to know, want them to grow in. Let this podcast bear much good fruit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've been listening to Terry Modica of Good News Ministries. For more faith builders, or to learn more about this ministry, 
come visit our website at gnm.org. You'll find online resources and lots more to help you know the Father's love and grow closer to Christ and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Visit gnm.org today.